I'm not really a huge fan of uh, memoirs. Um, they're often um, not particularly well written. Um, they tend towards the sentimental and um, they seem to sort of sit between the kind of dispassionate um, objectivity of a, if that is possible, of a, um, of a, uh, of a biography um, and the uh, somehow kind of, you know, what do you call it, sort of um, kind of transcendental, transcendental nature of, 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 of art and the novel. <clears throat> Sorry, but I have just read a memoir. Um, which is extraordinary, and I highly recommend it on every level. It's beautifully written. It's incredibly wise and witty, um, and it sort of it tells you uh, it it tells us an enormous amount about the, the the writer, the woman who wrote it. But it tells an enormous amount about ourselves, I think, which I think is the. Um, which is a very important part of, of, of why we read and often why we tend to read novels more than non-fiction because that's through some kind of osmosis that that happens um but this is i mean this is ostensibly a short memoir by a woman in her mid to late 40s who spent a lot of time as a um foreign stroke war correspondent um in angola during the long civil war um that's kind of where it stops in terms of how similar it is to how you imagine a memoir like that might be. Um, it's here, it's called This Is The Place To Be by Lara Pawson. Um, it's published by, it's beautifully published by CBE Editions. Um, what she does here, which I think is, I mean, you'll get a sense of the sort of clarity and precision of the sentence making in a second. But what she does is she tends to, in short paragraphs, often with a dropped line, so you know the pages look rather like that, she tends to juxtapose moments from her childhood, moments from her current life, then uh, moments in Angola and other parts of West Africa. And so we get this kind of it's a kind of liminal sense of, of a person um, existing almost between those sort of three elements. And that person gets becomes kind of constructed before us by these small bits of juxtaposition. It's obvious that there's some harrowing um, episodes in there. How could there not be? Um, this is a civil war in Africa. And you know they still are and always were very brutal. Um, I have to say, I mean, I've been to West Africa twice, both to the same place, which was um, uh, where a girlfriend at the time was living. Oh, she was in fact Senegalese. So you know, I, I all I know is a bit of the coastline of, of Senegal and and um, surrounding areas and a bit of the savannah. So I'm no, I'm no expert. I have to say, I found Africa incredibly seductive but actually quite scary at the same time um, and in a sense there's nothing about this book that really makes me want to go back to Africa um, through sheer cowardice I think because it's it does represent or is something I think that one has to have the character to embrace and give a certain sense of oneself too so it reciprocates back um and i'm not sure you know i have that in me anymore but clearly lara did and probably still does um and i think that's what makes a foreign correspondent um you know a very great foreign correspondence is when when they when there is that very deep essential trade kind of existential trade and she clearly took horrendous risks i mean imagine that you know a, a single young woman often traveling alone in uh, a war zone irrespective of, of 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 where what continent it's on that's an incredibly dangerous place um 
so she, you know, so she, and, and I think she will, will permit me to say that she, you know, she was both brave and foolhardy and probably lucky. Um, but it, one senses that what she, what she gives of herself makes that luck. I don't know. But I just want to read a couple of passages um, to give a sense of, um, of just the kind of, just the kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a kind of wit. She, she, at this point she's talking about, you know, what it's like to be a woman in these situations, which is largely male, largely very conscious of status and power. And she says here in a very short paragraph, Years later, I found out from a man, someone I'd thought of as a friend, that he and a presidential aide had made a bet on which one of them could get me into bed first. Worse is the slight pleasure I felt on learning this. I mean, that's, that's just brilliant writing and honesty and candour. Um, it just, you know, it's... it's, it's it's not much, and I will read more, but it, it, it tells you something about the book. And but this one is very, this is two paragraphs. A long time ago, the owner of a sweet shop picked up my sister and put her inside a large freezer. Shopkeepers probably won't do that anymore. Back then, though, we thought it was hilarious. Thinking of that freezer reminds me of another one in a tower block in Luanda. A friend was cooking me a meal with meat he pulled from a freezer. As he smashed the thawing beef to pieces, the blood splattered, forming long red lines down the sides of the white cooling crate. I thought of this wonderful man before me, of how he had been tortured in the 1970s and was, to, and was made to suck his own blood off the floor of the prison. That's a sort of example of how she juxtaposes, you know, a kind of comic moment and then a moment later in her life where the freezer becomes this pivot between, you know, childhood freedom and fun and the desperate life or memory of, of, of a man um, in, you know, in the war. And the book is full of this stuff. And it's so, it's so compulsive. I just couldn't stop reading it and just loving it almost every line, every line. Um, it starts with, um, it starts with a whole three or four passages, passages is about how she's often mistaken for, a, for um, either a transvestite or Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, and it's just this sort of, I don't know what is this sort of. She's a sort of. It's just an act of generosity to share herself um, like this with such startlingly clear prose, and then give us the window on the war, um, but without somehow intruding upon it, even though it is. You know, it is. It is very much about about her. So I just, I can't recommend this more highly. Um, and it's, as I said, CBE editions. This is the place to be by Lara Paulson. It's not very long. Um, and um, it's just wonderful. Um, yeah, so that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. And um, well, the elections tomorrow, please all go out and vote not for Trump. Um, those in America, um, and <clears throat> on Wednesday I'm attending the uh, prize announcement of the Goldsmith Prize, so I shall try and um, make a video from there. Um, thank you very much. Goodbye.